And then News Watch Hill Weekend, celebrate Indigenous Peoples Day. We'll share how some area tribes spent the weekend. Plus, a family's way to ensure that a loved one could continue to be remembered. We'll share how a memorial fundraiser did just that. And later, a brand new set after a decade, WGFW has refreshed our on-air look. We'll share the details later about all that's taken place. Those stories and more as News Watch 12 Weekend starts right now. News Watch 12 with Kyle Pazorski, Muhammad Abdul Kawi, and Jeff Weller. Welcome to News Watch 12 Weekend. I'm Kyle Pazorski, joined by Serenity Douglas. Jeff Weller and Muhammad Abdul Kawi will join us shortly. So we start tonight talking about Sunday Night Football, the game that just got done here on NBC between the Bengals and Ravens. You know, the Ravens won that game 19 to 17. And so Serenity, just tell us a little bit about that game and other NFL implications. That's right, Cal. It was a good game between the two great quarterbacks, Joe Burrow and Lamar Jackson. This game had two big storylines. The first one was the Bengals Super Bowl hangover, struggling to win games after making the Super Bowl last year. The other storyline was that Aaron Rodgers got a big fat check from his team. And Ravens quarterback Lamar Jackson said, I deserve that kind of money. Only problem is that his team doesn't think so. Now about those Packers. They dropped a close one to the Giants earlier today to fall to three and two on the year. If you were up that early to watch it, good for you. If not, we'll have a full recap and full highlights later on in the show. Well, thanks for that, Serenity. Now, tomorrow is Indigenous Peoples Day here in Wisconsin, as well as any few other states. That's because in 2019, Wisconsin Governor Tony Evers designated the second Monday of October as a day to honor Indigenous peoples. This decision was met with some pushback across the state amongst opponents who believe the day should, be, should continue to be recognized as Columbus Day. Wisconsin has 11 federally recognized tribal nations, all with one, the Brothertown Indian Nation, which is not federally recognized. While Wisconsin does not officially celebrate Columbus Day, the federal government does, closing post offices tomorrow. Several schools in the area are also recognizing the day, many choosing to hold teacher and service days. A look locally at some schools who are choosing to take the day off includes Northland Pines, Minocqua, Lakeland Union, Rhinelander, and Three Lakes. Earlier today, the Central Wisconsin Indigenous Peoples Day powwow celebration came to an end, and that's after three long years of waiting for its return. The East Gate Hall's atmosphere was electric with all sorts of colorful costumes and music for everyone to enjoy. Kids and adults were on their feet dancing to the beat of drums. Here, take a listen. The main purpose of the powwow is to provide awareness and educate about the different cultures. Master of Ceremony Dylan Prescott says bringing the community together to celebrate is important to their culture. There's all different races of people here, and they're all here for the same thing. We're all here to enjoy each other. We're all here to laugh. We're all here to make new friends. We're all here to dance. We're all here to hear, mu to hear music. So it's a great feeling, man. It's great. Tribes from all over Wisconsin, the United States, and even Canada celebrated the powwow this weekend, with Prescott saying it's all about honoring the original inhabitants of the area. Indians were the central part, you know, of Wisconsin, and we haven't been having that connection, you know, with all our relatives, Indian relatives throughout the community, throughout the state. So, you know, now that we're able to come together and we're able to do this once again, you know, it's, it's really good for our people. It helps us mentally, it helps us physically and emotionally. Organizers were happy about the amount of people that showed up this weekend and are excited for the future of the event. And now Chief Meteorologist Jeff Waller joins us for a first glance at the forecast. And Jeff, beautiful new set that we have, but let's talk about the forecast Yeah, first. high temperatures up near 60 today. We'll do it again tomorrow, followed by some big changes getting in here on Tuesday. In fact, check out these graphics now. You can see high temperatures today hanging out near 60. That's about what we're supposed to do this time of year. Again, tomorrow, same story. And then we could easily go for 70 on Tuesday before a strong cold front's going to come through and really change things for us on Wednesday. Thursday and Friday. Right now, though, we're at 44 in Rhinelander, 40 for Leona, 46 for Wausau. We'll have low temperatures tonight down near 30, so kind of just like last night uh, with a hard frost and freeze out there once again. But there is some warmer temperatures building to the west of us. That is moving in our direction. So again, it's going to get warmer before it gets colder. And when it gets colder <laughs> later on Wednesday into Thursday, uh, we could hold high temperatures by the end of the week in the upper 30s. Lots of clear skies out there now. we got that radiational cooling, of course, and off to 
the west of us, there's not much going on, all right? We're talking about clear skies pretty much back to the Pacific Ocean. That's going to keep us nice and dry for now, but a cold front is going to come through later Wednesday and bring us some rain showers then. Our forecast then for tonight, though, is mostly clear skies with low temperatures down near 30. Your full forecast is coming up. Kyle? Thank you, Jeff. Today was the last day of the fall edition of the Northwoods Art Tour. Earlier this, this year, organizing the organizing group held a summer version showing off all sorts of artwork. The art tour allows for people to tour different art studios to see how artists create their masterpieces. But all of them are phenomenal artists. It's very interesting. They answer your questions um, about their, their um, techniques and materials and whatnot. And um, being in their studios makes it extra special. Even though the event is over, many artists run their own businesses, offering classes as well as showing off their work year-round. Nativity of our Lord Church welcomed the faithful of the surrounding area through their joyful song Ecumenical Fest on Sunday afternoon. The event was a joint fundraiser for NAMI Northwoods, the Boys and Girls Club, and Tri-County Council for Lily's Shelter. Mary Dahl, one of the event organizers, called the various vocalist abilities very impressive. Hearing all the wonderful talent from all the different churches and throughout the community that have come to just join forces to support the three local nonprofits that are were donating funds to. There were plenty of hymns sung with a total of 13 groups that sang, including representation from four local churches. The over 100 member audience also held a standing ovation for the group finale. I think it's just a great example of the community that Rhinelander is. We live in a wonderful, wonderful place. The event concluded with a chili and cornbread dinner. Organizers said that the leftovers would go to feed the area homeless. Over the weekend, community members in Tomahawk gathered for the 14th annual Tyler Carl Memorial Fundraiser. After passing at the age of 19, the field that was refurbished in his honor has now grown and been maintained to continue honoring his life. Newswatch 12's Matt Weaver has the story. The Carl name in Tomahawk with baseball, it intertwines. Tyler Carl was born with the national pastime in his blood. Tyler played through, through the whole system, Little League, Pony League, and so forth, through high school baseball, and loved the sport. When Tyler grew up, he left the Northwoods for work. I can still see him walking off my deck the day he left to go to Alaska. After an industrial accident took his life in 2007, the community came together in support of his family. Tomahawk is a kind of town that if you're hurting, everybody's hurting. In order to ensure that his legacy live on, the family took out a loan to purchase the property at Pride Park that would soon become known as Tyler Carl Memorial Field. It was a way that we could make something positive out of a, a tragedy. It's probably one of the most meaningful things that I've ever done in my life. You know, he was a young man, 19 years old, went to Alaska to live his dream and make a good living and, and uh, enjoy life. And, and his life was cut short prematurely, you know, and it was a sad, sad deal. And it affected this whole community. It was the family's way of ensuring that the game Tyler loved would continue to be played in his neighborhood. That was a field in Tomahawk that used to have just a tremendous baseball field. And it had... Um, over the years just turned to to weeds and it was un, an underutilized field in the city's park system. 15 years later the community still gathers to pay off the mortgage and fund improvement projects to the facility. They know the importance of the field to the community and to the family. More than 300 people turned out to their recent fundraiser. It's a hard night for us every year but it's a heartwarming night and we have a lot of friends and family and this is a wonderful community that comes together that supports each other when there's a tragedy. The foundation recently redid the infield and will continue to improve the project for the next generation of ball players. Tyler would be just beside himself if he could see what, how the town has rallied around him and his life and his family, his parents. In Tomahawk, Matt Weaver, News Watch 12. Food for Kids needs volunteers for October 22nd. To help, go online or call today. There's no other place where my story is possible. My mom was a teacher. My dad worked third shift. It was our ticket to the middle class. That's the promise of America I'll fight to protect. While others send our jobs overseas, I'll bring manufacturing back, invest in our own workers, and stock our shelves with American products. And with a middle class tax cut, you'll be able to keep more of what you earn. I know the promise of America and no one will fight harder to protect it. 
I'm Mandela Barnes, and I approve this message. Get 11% off everything at Menards. Light up your workspace with a new work light from Smart Electrician. This 10,000 lumen LED work light is super bright, weather resistant, and portable. Shine light where you need it with 11% off all work lights. Get your yard work done with a new powerful leaf blower from Works. Works power tools make fall cleanup projects quick and easy. All Works outdoor power tools are 11% off at Menards. Save big money at Menards. Cellcom's live local customer service is just a call or click away, so it's always clear where you can get help. What's not clear is why you just went down to the basement. What did I... Why you went downstairs? Unclear. Easy access to the customer care you deserve? Crystal clear. Cellcom. Clarity in a cloudy world. Save 50% on select smartphones at Cellcom September 30th through October 31st. Taxes due at sale. Restrictions apply. Visit cellcom.com slash deals for details. Carl Boletsky brutally shot and decapitated his wife with a large kitchen knife. Mark Ketterhagen shot and killed a young teenage girl and tossed her body in the Fox River. These are just some of the convicted criminals freed early by Governor Tony Evers' parole commission. 884 in all, including 270 murderers and attempted murderers, 44 child rapists. Terrence Shaw randomly raped and murdered a mother in her home. Tony Evers promised voters, quote, we will not release violent criminals. He lied. Okay, another hard freeze out there tonight with low temperatures down near 30, but that's not the main story. The story is going to be warmer temperatures tomorrow, followed by 70 degree temperatures on Tuesday. Outside today, we did 59. We can handle that, right? But are out there, there were some 60s earlier today. Many of us will do 60s tomorrow, followed by some low 70s getting in here on Tuesday. As we're building some heat across the west right now, this is not a normal October pattern, but okay, here we go. Up near 70 again over the uh, next couple of days, followed by a big cool down getting in here late Wednesday into Thursday and Friday. In fact, look what happens here. So cold air is on the way. Here's Tuesday. We're talking about temperatures back up near 70, but watch right there. There it is, right? Keep your eye on that. That is moving our direction, and it's going to settle over us for Friday and Saturday again, and then that's going to bring us some really cool temperatures, probably talking daytime high temperatures for some of us in the 30s on Friday, and then look, Beyond that, it's going to stay cool. So this is a rather cold pattern setting in here, uh, at least into the weekend, into the early portions of next week. On paper, it looks like this. So 61 is my forecasted high temperature tomorrow, but many of you could easily go for 65. And then look, 71 for us on Tuesday, Wednesday 58. Those are high temperatures in the 40s, low 40s for Thursday and a Friday. Uh, so we're going to turn a corner here pretty quickly with a much colder end of week on the way. Okay, right now the wind is out of the northeast around 0 to 5 miles per hour. This will actually go calm for several hours tonight. That will likely give us some dense fog early tomorrow morning. We're talking 3, 4, 5 o'clock in the morning. So if you're out driving, get your low beams on. That will help you through the fog tomorrow morning. All right, so out there today, a beautiful day, right? We had lots of sunshine pretty much all day long. And then when the sun came out, temperatures kind of hung out basically up in the 60s uh, across much of the area. That is now gone as we have temperatures hanging out pretty much much in the 30s and 40s out there now, and we'll have low temperatures tonight down near 30. Lots of clear skies across the area now. Again, this is not going to be good for temperatures tonight with a hard freeze likely once again. But off to the west of us, not much going on here at all, right? This is not a very October-like pattern where typically we see several storm systems on. Oh, not right now. Uh, lots of dry weather across the west. Everything is going up and around us. So we will stay dry until Wednesday when a cold front is going to come through Wednesday night and cool us down for Thursday. Our forecast then for tomorrow, we're talking about partly cloudy skies, high temperatures up in the low 60s to the north. For the south, there could be a couple mid-60s in here tomorrow. Again, that's not normal. The average high is back in the 50s. Our forecast then tonight, though, is mostly clear skies, widespread freeze once again. Your plants are priority dead, though. Look for low temperatures down near 30. For tomorrow, okay, it's Monday, but look, mostly sunny and really nice outside. High temperatures up near 61 with a south breeze around 5. And then looking ahead, your seven-day forecast by Northwest Furniture and Mattress shows tomorrow a very nice day. Tuesday, a very warm day, followed by a couple of rain showers in here Wednesday into Thursday. Kyle? 
Okay, well, thanks, Jeff. We hinted about it before, but now let's chat about it. Newswatch 12 has a brand new set design, and this is bringing a brand new way for everyone to watch what we do. Take a look at this, a time-lapse video of all that's happened. It's here in this space where Newswatch 12 today, new news now, up north at 4, Newswatch 12 evenings, and Newswatch 12 weekend are all broadcast from. WJFW moved into the space in the late 60s as our original building was destroyed by a plane accident which took down the tower that was standing right above the original studio. And now joining me are all my friends from the Newswatch 12 weekend team. We're going to kind of talk about this brand new set. I'm super excited about it because I think what's special about this entire set is that we have this and there's a great video wall and we have this entire brand new desk that we have. So it's really kind of cool, isn't it? It is. Yeah. Yeah, there was, there was no expense spared in this room, right? We have new things that you see at home, of course, and we have uh, the video wall, we have a new desk, but there's also a new switcher, new cameras, new lighting, new flooring going in. So it's not quite done yet, but we're getting really close. Yeah, well, earlier today, Creative Services Director Walter Terry spoke to me about how this upgrade is something you wouldn't typically expect to see in a small town like Rhinelander. Let's have a look. It's been a decade since Newswatch 12 has had a new set, which has since become dated. Get us out of our old studio set and into a more modern set. Some features of our new studio space includes five robotic cameras, an expansive video wall, professionally installed lighting, as well as clear and bright teleprompters. Terry says the changes are very dramatic, tearing down the old green screen walls and outdated set to give a more dynamic and lively feeling. So by removing our CPW wall, where you would usually see the up north at four couch, it freed up a lot of that. And so now our colors are going to be truer on our cameras. Perhaps the most striking change is the addition of a 15 foot wide by 8 foot tall seamless video board comprised of 210 panels. This change will enhance the way stories can be told, coming a long way from when Terry began working at WJFW in 2018. We were a little limited with our equipment when I first started and as the years have gone on, myself and others here at the station have proven that we really can take everything to the next level. The way that Everyone here at the station at WJFW just got together on board with this. It truly showed how much of a great team all of us are here at WJFW. And we can't wait to show you, the viewers, all of our new changes. <laughs> Well, coming up after the break, Serenity is here and she'll go through all the sports highlights from today. You're not gonna wanna miss it. Stick with us. Hey, here's a fun fact. Three out of four members of Congress were already professional politicians before they even got to D.C. And then they cash in and become lobbyists. It ain't me. I'm Derek Van Orden, a retired Navy SEAL with 26 years of service. And I will pass term limits and ban congressmen from ever becoming lobbyists. I'm Derek Van Orden and I approve this message. Let's try something different. Let's change the people we send to D.C. At Lakeside Living Design, we've always got something stylish in store for you. Whether you're looking for high-quality custom upholstery, decorative accessories and gifts, or are designing your space entirely from scratch, you'll have a friendly designer by your side sharing their expertise, helping you bring your unique style to life. So stop by, explore our showroom, and together we'll make your space feel just like home. Habish attorneys are the best of what a personal injury attorney is about. To get the most money for your case, you need to have a law firm that's unrelenting. We will fight with all that we have in person power, in knowledge and experience to bring about the result they deserve. I can't give them their life back how it was, but I can give them the financial compensation to get their life back on track. When it happened, he was the boss. These allegations span over two decades. Women at Tim Michaels' company say they were pressured to have sex with their supervisors. If she refused demands for sex, she would be blackballed from working on a pipeline. And sexually harassed. The female worker was given a sex toy and pornographic images for her birthday. If this is how Tim Michaels runs his business, how do you think he'd run the state? Tim Michaels' agenda is radically wrong.
Bright and early, the Packers faced off in London for their first international game against the New York Giants. Both the Giants and the Packers came in 3-1. and one. It was a tough game for the Packs, but let's look at some highlights. Taking us to the north of London, Totenham Hotspur Stadium hosted the Giants and the Packers. Early in the first, Mason Crosby's kick is good for 48 yards, putting the Packers on the board 3-0. Now second and goal, Rodgers to Lazard. Real easy touchdown. The Packers are up 10-0. Second quarter, Giants get on the board with a field goal. But look at this pass to Mercedes Lewis to lengthen the score gap 17-3. The Giants will respond, though, with running a back to Saquon Barkley to the Giants' tight end, Daniel Bellinger, making it a seven-point difference. Now, moving on to the fourth quarter, when things get really spicy, they're tied at the 20. Giants with the ball, Barkley will run it on a first and goal, giving the Giants a lead, making it 27-20. The Giants win it, the final score, 27-22. Let's hear what Coach LaFleur had to say about what went wrong. Everything, you know, it wasn't good enough. So, talk, uh, you know, again, give New York all the credit. Uh, Mike Kafka, Brian Dayball, their players uh, going out there and, and coming up with a good plan and then out executing. Aaron Rodgers details what he thinks the team could have improved on to walk away with the win. Could have started a little faster. I think I missed Rome's in the first drive for a big one. Um, yeah, then we had some opportunities in the second half, but you know, probably could have chosen Cobby there on the last play and had a higher percentage throw. The Pets will play the Jets next Sunday at home, 12th noon. Now staying with the NFL, but on to a more serious note. The NFL modified their concussion policies and the first day of the new protocol started today. The new protocols include a process of evaluation on players showing symptoms that give step-by-step -step instructions on if and how player can get back to the game. There are two types of evaluations for the players, a sideline survey for the less severe cases and a locker room examination for the more severe injuries. The NFL updated their protocols after the poor handling of the Tua Tagovailoa concussion that occurred in week three that resulted in the firing of one of the Dolphins' medical consultants. If you were scared for how the Badgers were going to play yesterday in their first game without Paul Christ, you were in the majority. However, they did just fine with his replacement, Jim Leonard taking over. The offense was firing on all cylinders yesterday, with quarterback Graham Mertz throwing for a 299-yard and five touchdowns to help the team win in an impressive fashion, 42-7. Leonard had a similar path as Chris to becoming a head coach. Born and raised in Wisconsin, played football for the Badgers, and served as one of their assistant coaches before taking a head coaching role. Situations like this are always awkward for the players, but Coach Leonard said that his priority was to overcome that adversity and move on. Extremely proud for how we came out. Um, we talked on Sunday with the guys, right? We needed to execute so much better. Offense, defense, special teams weren't playing up to our standard, and to see them rally this week and get that done under the circumstances was huge. That's who to look for. I hope I'm not jinxing it, but Jim Leonard is officially undefeated as a head football coach. We'll look to keep that undefeated streak alive next week when the Badgers take on Michigan State. Back to you, Kyle. Well, thanks for that, Serenity. When we come back, you look around the world for some of the world's biggest headlines, including a mall in Pakistan, which caught fire. We'll have that coming up after the break. Tim Michaels' company has been sued numerous times for sexual assault and harassment in the workplace. But he says... People love working at Michaels. Women said they were groped assaulted, and pressured to have sex with their bosses. We have a great work culture. Higher-ups called the women liars and fired those who spoke out. So when he says this... We have a great work culture. Know that the culture comes from the top. This Saturday through Tuesday only, you'll get our best discounts of the whole year. It's Slumberland's Customer Appreciation Sale, and it's a huge deal. Everyone gets an extra 33% off our already low Slumberland prices. October 8th through 11th, shop our wide range of mattresses and furniture. 
33% off Saturday, Sunday, Monday, and Tuesday. The customer appreciation sale only at Slumberland Furniture. Don't miss this one. Welcome. We're so glad you're here. Looking for one of our most capable Ford SUVs? Okay, great. We've got you covered. Spacious interiors, innovative tech, good looks, and a legendary off-road experience. Check out our inventory today or let us help you place a custom order. Getting into the perfect Ford SUV? Well, it's easier than ever. Yeah, we've got you covered. Now choose FlexFi on a 2022 Ford Escape or Edge and get 0% financing for 66 months. Hershner's in Stevens Point is your local craft destination. Shop the Hershner's retail store for the latest yarn, quilting fabric, diamond paintings, latch hooks, needlework, general crafts, and more, including Wisconsin's largest selection of puzzles. Shop on over to the locally owned and operated Hershner's retail outlet store on Hoover Road, located one block west of I-39 in Stevens Point. We're paying more for food, gas, and rent. But Tony Evers wants to take even more of our money. He tried to raise the gas tax by 20% and double the tax on our heating bills. Evers wanted to use our tax dollars to pay people who refuse to work. And he wanted to give taxpayer-funded benefits to those who entered our country illegally. Evers even opposed drug testing for those getting welfare. We just can't afford four more years of Tony Evers. And welcome back. We turn now to some national headlines from outside of the Northwoods. To break it all down is our own Muhammad Abdul Kawi. And Muhammad, take it away. Thanks, Kyle. A fire broke out in Pakistan's Suntourist Mall today. However, everyone inside the mall were evacuated safely, according to the Islamabad authorities. Islamabad police said that the helicopter was being brought in to aid and to rescue in firefighting operation. They added that the fire inside the mall was under control and no shop was damaged, although where there were some flames on the mall's exterior, which were being extinguished. Islamabad police said that the mall will be sealed once the rescue operation is complete till an investigation into the fire's cause and no one will be allowed to enter in it. Pakistan's prime minister saying in a tweet that he had ordered relevant institutions and authorities to take immediate action. Abo Abortion rights advocates held that what they call woman's wave demonstration across the nation today to rally supporters ahead of the midterm elections. Thousands of people marched in Washington, D.C. and Boston behind a banner that read woman's wave rising. Organizers asked supporters to wear blue clothes and make blue wave shaped signs to demonstrate feminist tsunamis. The Women's March website said it is time for a fall of reckoning. According to the Women's March group, more than 380 marches were planned Saturday in all 50 states. Lieutenant Governor Mandela Barnes held a rally for Roe event in Milwaukee on Saturday. The Democratic Senate candidate is focusing on abortion rights in the final stretch to election day. It's part of the pro-abortion rights tour that his campaign launched a week ago. If elected, he said he will go into Washington to help create a pro-abortion Senate majority that would vote to codify the right to abortion into federal law. Well, we're in the middle of our Ron against Roe tour because we have a senator who needs to be held accountable for his dangerous position on abortion. He's supported eight different abortion bans in 12 years. It's a fight that we can win. It's a fight that we will win. Barnes hopes pro-abortion stance will help narrow the gap between him and the Republic senator, Ron Johnson. The latest polling information gives Johnson a three percentage point lead over Barnes, 49 to 46. That does it for all the look across the country. For more news and headlines, head to WJFW.com. Ka? Well, thanks, Mohammed. When we come back, Jeff will have one more final look at the forecast. But before the break, check out these fall foliage pictures taken by a viewer near Crandon. Stick with us. You're watching Newswatch 12 Weekend. Food for Kids needs volunteers for October 22nd. To help, go online or call today. Dear Exit Strategy, all your pieces are in place. Thanks for being there when I need you most. Always Toyota SUVs. Toyota, let's go places. Update your home with a fresh paint color from Menards. Dutch Boy Forever is an interior paint and primer in one with stain blocking... 
And so this wraps up our first show in this brand new studio. And Jeff, I got to give a lot of thanks to you. You were a big part in making this all happen, right? Thank so you. I think this has come along very well. And the show tonight was kind of to showcase what we were all doing behind this kind of grand vision. Yeah, there is a huge team, though, that made this all come mm -hmm. together. Of course, I made the big ask to start, but then other people stepped in, Walter especially, you know, and uh, Marty, our engineer as well. So that all came together. And this is just the start of something really cool, I think. Yeah, well, that's definitely for sure. And I really thank you all for watching tonight. That's all we have. Have a great night, everyone.